Okay, constructing a rhombus. Now, again, I'm just going to start with a, uh, a length of any particular, uh, a line of any particular length. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be a, a parallel to the bottom of my piece of paper, but I'm going to try and make it as close as possible. I'm going to say the length is going to be about uh, that long. Make it kind of dark. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's make a straight line and pick two points. We'll make two points. We'll make that one and we'll make that one. We'll call that A. We'll call that B. Now, I want to construct a rhombus. Uh, properties of a rhombus mean that, well, it's a parallelogram, except all the sides are congruent. Well, when we want to construct anything with congruent sides, uh, the best tool that we can use is a compass. Because as we know, a compass is amazing at ensuring that we can create side lengths that are all congruent, because when we measure the width of something, like for example those two points, and my compass doesn't move, I know that I can have slide lengths that are congruent. Now to create a rhombus, uh, all that we really care about is that the side lengths are congruent. The angles in between those sides, that really doesn't matter. That has no bearing on a property of a rhombus. So what I'm going to do is, is after I've extended my compass, I put one end on A, one end on B, because I know that's what the lengths of my uh, rhombus are going to be. Make sure that I'm right. Okay, that's my length. That's how big my side length is going to be. I'm going to put the non-pointy end on A and just draw an arc. doesn't particularly matter how big it is, but I'm going to draw an arc. Make it a little dark. So I, uh, Hopefully my compass doesn't move too much. It's not the best right now. But there we go. Much better. Drawing an arc. And without moving my compass, after that arc is nice and dark, poet and don't even know it, I'm going to move the non-pointy into B and do the exact same thing, drawing an arc. Excellent. Good. So I've now got two arcs, and I've made sure the compass hasn't changed width. See, the distance between A and B are still, still the same, so that's good. Now, though, to make sure it's a rhombus, this is different than a parallelogram, because a parallelogram, this side was going to be longer. It doesn't have to be, but it was for our construction. For our rhombus, I am still going to just randomly choose a point on my first arc. I'm going to say, let's pick one, let's make a shallow rhombus, or a short rhombus, and let's put the point there. Okay, no problem. I still have not changed the width of my compass. So by doing that, and I'll call that C, I'll put the non-pointy in on C. And again, I have not changed this length because I need all the sides to be the same. I'm going to draw an arc that intersects the second one I drew. Here we go. I'll call that intersection point D, a little skew, and it looks like I've got some dots to connect. I'll connect A to C, D to B, and the parallel line, well, the one original, parallel to the original line I did draw, D to C. And if I want to bust out my handy ruler here, I'll say that one is, I don't know, about two and a half inches, give or take. That one sure looks like it's two and a half inches, give or take. Uh, maybe a little bit longer, maybe it wasn't perfect, but it was darn close. About two and a half inches. And I have created a parallelogram that has side lengths that are all congruent, which is also known as a rhombus. 
I'd just like to point out before I close, uh, we remember, just like a parallelogram, I can make the height of my rhombus as tall or short as I would like. I might be height restricted, that could happen. The properties of a rhombus just say all the sides are the same. So I can have a rhombus that goes up here. It would probably go closer to this spot over here than here. But that's fine. Everyone's rhombus can be different. And that is entirely okay. Thank you very much.